All rise for the jury. Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, two victim family members will read victim impact statements. Mr. Martinez. The uh, state calls Tanisha Sorensen. protected me and inspired me. He was such a huge influence in my life. Huge. My life was peace. I would have never met my husband without his influence. My life would be so much different. I feel so fortunate to have been blessed with such a wonderful brother, however short lived. Today I am 34 years old. I have outlived my older brother. Travis will be forever 30 in my memory. Every year that I age past 30, I think about where Travis would have been. Travis had so many hopes and dreams. He wanted a lovely wife and a bunch of children. Travis doesn't get to have that wife. He doesn't get to have those children. We'll never get to see him be a father or meet his children. My children will never grow up to know their Uncle Travis. Instead, they will know that he was a victim of murder. Growing up, we lost our dad on Travis's 20th birthday and our, mo our mother shortly after. During these devastating deaths, Travis was the one who gave us strength when we were completely lost. Travis was the person who comforted us when our father died in a motorcycle accident. Travis was the one who gave our mother's eulogy at her funeral. When we found out Travis was dead, we did not have Travis to comfort us. We had yet another devastating death, and we had no idea how to help the handle our family has been through a living hell. There are not enough words to express what we have been going through. Our family has literally fallen apart. The way that Travis was ripped from our life but it has completely destroyed my mental health. I have been through numerous psychologists. I was diagnosed with 
post-traumatic stress disorder. The horrific details of the last moments of my brother's life and the images of my brother's dead body will forever be stained in my memory. I have overwhelming thoughts about losing another family member or having to endure through another tragedy. I am scared every day of closing my eyes in the shower or having to defend myself while I'm at a vulnerable state. I started to lose myself and revolve my entire life around what happened to Travis and anything to do with this trial. I wanted to mirror Travis by striving to do the things that he set out to do before he died. I obsessed over living out Travis's legacy to the point that I nearly lost my own identity. Due to the negative effects of Travis's death, I have slipped into a deep state of depression. I have an extreme amount of anxiety. When people are around me, I feel like crawling under a rock. I feel guilty when I'm having fun. I start to think about Travis and slip back into that same state of depression. I distanced myself from my siblings and my loving husband. I alienated my husband to the point I almost destroyed my marriage. I soon started to lose my faith in God and my will to live. I try to remind myself to not let those terrible things that happened to Travis and our family impact my life anymore. But I am continuously reminded of the death of my brother over and over. This is one of my favorite pictures of Travis. This is that picture at six. The face and the smile of my love. Now the autopsy photos of my brother's decomposing body and mummified face are the images I can't get out of my head. Despite all the counseling and so many different sorts of sorts of medication, I doubt I will ever, ever be able to remove those horrible images from my memory. This is a picture Exhibit 6 of Travis and my grandmother. We called her Mama. She was the one who raised Travis. She was devastated when she was informed about Travis's death. My siblings had to travel to Arizona in store painting in the exact same place my brother was murdered. They had to pack up his home and arrange for his memorial mesa. My grandmother and I had to make all the funeral arrangements, including picking out his casket at his headstone and writing his obituary. <coughs> Travis was our strength. Our motivation and his presence has been ripped from our lives. His giving spirit, his determination for accomplishment, and his endless strength as a close the foundation of our family has been taken away from us and it can never be replaced. Never. Travis worked hard for everything he had. He never had any handouts and he never took anything for granted. Travis was not shy. He was full of life, full of it. If he were able to walk into this courtroom, you would immediately feel his love and his warmth. Travis would cry with you. He would laugh with you and joke with you, always lifting your spirits. Travis's greatest attributes were his abilities to make others feel appreciated, accepted, and loved because he genuinely cared about making those around him feel good about themselves. Travis this is exhibit 680. <laughs> was a huge animal lover. He treated his dog Napoleon like his own child. One of the things Travis would do with his pastime when we were growing up is volunteer at the local animal shelter. We helped clean the cages, feed the animals, and walk the dogs that were not likely to be adopted. The last thing we spent.
good together. I remember him singing and joking in the mirror, literally making me laugh so hard that my stomach hurt. It was an amazing day, an amazing day. He asked me to drive around with him and give care packages to the homeless. It truly, truly touched my heart. We drove around the area we grew up and handed out 25 care packages providing essential hygiene products, food items, and, per and a personalized me message that he wrote on the brown bag that held his gift. He wrote, the difference between a stubbly block and a stepping stone is the character of the individual walking the path. Instead of the memory of the wonderful last day we had, where he was singing and dancing in front of the mirror, making me laugh so hard my stomach hurt. Every time I look into the mirror, I think about the last moments of his life. Everything, every day I think about what Travis must have gone through. The pain, the agony, and the fear that Travis must have felt when he was struggling to save his life. Our minds are perfectly stained with the images of my four brothers' throats slip from ear to ear. Our minds are stained with the images of Travis's body slumped over dead in the shower. Each and every one of us have looked up to Travis for support and words for guidance during a time like this. And none of us ever thought he wouldn't be here when we needed him the most. My brother was an amazing, caring, and kind man. He was. He would give you the shirt off his back if you needed it. Travis wasn't anything but a loving brother, son, and a grandson, and a friend. He was our strength, our motivation to make our lives better than the ones we were born into. This is exactly why Travis was such an accomplished motivational speaker. It saddens and sickens us, sickens us all that his potential was cut short in our family and the world will never receive the benefit of his goodness. Something we have all missed that we will live the rest of our lives missing are our times together, especially during the holidays. We haven't had a family together since we've been gone. It's simply too hard to think about that one empty chair. It's not just the holidays, but now every day is not the same. Our lives will never be the same. Never. I cannot express how much we miss our brother. If we miss his contagious laughter, his singing voicemails, his jokes, his funny dances, his help in hard situations, his guidance when we are lost, his motivation, his insight, and his huge, huge smile. While I was writing this statement, I thought about Travis's greatest achievements. He had so many. I thought about his greatest failures, but I can only think of one. But it doesn't matter what I think, because all I can think about is my brother. And when I think of my brother, I don't want to see pictures of his slit throat. I don't want to see pictures of his blackened face. I don't want to see a gunshot wound to his head. I just want to close my eyes and see Travis, my brother. I just want to hear his voice, but I can't. State from Stephen Alexander.
Stephen Alexander. Raps was my big brother. I was sleeping in after working a graveyard shift in the morning. Woke up to the sound of my wife crying walking up the stairs. I will never forget what she said. Samantha, I can't tell her. You have to. My wife handed the phone to me. It was my sister Samantha. Crying hysterically, she then told me Stephen, Travis is dead. I thought I was dreaming. I didn't really have any details at the time, so I just gave the phone back to my wife. A few moments later, we found out he was killed. I remember walking out my back door and screaming at the sky, asking why. Then I dropped down into a corner, and then I cried some more. A while later, my commander called me with the same news, and I kept my composure. But in my head, I was re reliving that same moment all over again. As soon as we hung up, I broke down again. I remember thinking to myself that Travis was bulletproof, that he was stronger than any, that he couldn't be cut down, he couldn't be knocked down. He was in two motorcycle crashes and walked away on the He wrecked several cars and nothing happened to him. He rolled a snowmobile and not even a scratch. He was unbreakable. Who on earth would want to do this to him? For what reasons, he wanted to move forward in life to better himself and only to help others. Why him? I won't ever get the answers to most of my questions about my brother's murder. Questions like how much did he suffer? How much did he scream? What was he saying? And what was the last thing he saw? What was the final thought in his head? This is Exhibit 685. The last time I saw my brother was at Christmas of 2007. We had a really good time. A lot of our family was there. We played a bunch of family games. One in particular was the American Idol video game. Travis kept beating me. The only way I could actually beat him was by singing a Kelly Clarkson song. The girl voice that I could hear all the time. We had nicknames for each other. Stevis and Trav. So he said, Stevis, it doesn't count because it's a girl song. I tend to disagree. I got to meet my daughter and hold her for the first time. He said she was the most beautiful little girl he has ever seen. I never would have thought that, that was the last time I got to see him. The nature of my brother's murder has had a major impact on me. It's even invaded my dreams. I have nightmares about somebody coming after me with a knife and then going after my wife and daughter. When I wake up, I cannot establish what is real and what is a dream. I went searching through rooms, shaking my family to wake them up to make sure they are alive. The worst nightmare I ever had involved her. Two of her former boyfriends were holding me down as she began to cut my throat in front of my daughter. My wife has woken me up out of nightmares because I was screaming in my sleep. I've had dreams of my brother all curled up in the shower thrown in there, left the rock for days alone. At night, when I lay down, all I can think about is my brother's murder. Stab after stab. Him grabbing the blade of the knife, trying to fight for his life. Every time I go to wash my hands or look in the mirror at the scene, all I see is him. The fight and the life draining from his body. When I take a shower, I lock the door and have to look several times to make sure I'm not going to get attacked. I don't want these nightmares anymore. 
I can't control it. This is real for me. This is my hell. When is it going to end? I've been hospitalized several times for ulcers and came very near to death. I've been on several different antidepressants and anxiety drugs. Unfortunately, none of them really worked. At times, all they did was numb me, and they made things worse. I wasn't able to be the husband my wife deserved. I distanced myself from everybody. My wife and I ultimately separated for a period of two years after Travis was murdered. My poor little girl had me pass back and forth every week. Rekindled our marriage and where things at due to this trial. Last year I had to be away from them again. Missed out on a lot. My brother's murder and this trial have taken its toll on my marriage. My marriage is over and now I'm getting divorced. So at friendships, it has driven my siblings apart at times. I cannot wait for this to end so that we can get our lives back. <coughs> Travis used to write out his day on a flashcard. The last one he wrote said to call Stephen. I never got that call. He had been concerned about my health and wanted to fly me up to his house and help me quit smoking. I never got to go. Now I want to talk to you or see my brother. I have to go to a three and a half foot wide, an eight foot long, and six foot deep hole in the ground. That is where he ended up. That is where I go to celebrate Christmas with him. He was meant to do so much more, and he never got to live his dreams, never got to meet his goals. In 2008, he wrote his affirmations on his this year will be the best year of my life. This is the year that will eclipse all others. I will earn more, learn more, travel more, serve more, love more, and give more than all the other years of my life combined. True, other years now past have been at times magnificent, none like this. This is a year of metamorphosis, of growth and accomplishment that at previous times was unimaginable. A year where the impossible become commonplace and the unachievable become effortlessly achieved, where I raise myself to the heights of only visited by others, great men and women of this world, and by doing so, this year will be the best year of my life. And how will I do this? Through compassionate service, random acts of kindness, unconditional love, an acknowledgement of the true source of blessings with gratitude in my heart. And when I fail, I will learn from my mistakes, strengthen my resolve, and be better than I was before. What will I do to improve my finances? I will work harder, yes, but more importantly, I will work smarter and learn to leverage myself and get more out of one day than I previously had gotten out of a month. I will succeed through integrity and through the selfless service of others. Through the powerful for forces that structure the mind, I will tap into the source of infinite intelligence and be more efficient in all my endeavors and be exponentially greater asset to his world. I will love and then love. I will serve and then serve more. I will forgive and then forgive more. I will not let these thoughts fade, but instead remind myself of them daily and spend time visualizing myself and the accomplishment of them until the day that my thoughts become reality. Then I will not stop but press forward to new goals and new heights in my quest to change this world. 
I will be a published author and effortlessly doing what I was meant to do to better my life and the lives of others. I will associate with more successfully minded people to be a teacher as well as a student. I will travel this great country and this great planet, gaining rich experiences found by very few. I will find an eternal companion that enhances me exponentially and countless other goals that at the point I dare not even 2008 will be the best year of my life, which will lay the foreground for 2009 to dwarf the accomplishments of 2008. This year will be the best year of my life, and I will succeed. I know Travis only hoped to change one life, but have never have thought he could change the world. Travis believed every single one of us was created to be successful. We all have different lives and trials. We just have to get there. You were born to be great. That is your destiny. The difference between a stumbling block and a stepping stone is the character of the individual walking the path. That was the philosophy that he called. That was my brother. That is the way my brother lived his life. That is the way he wanted to continue to live. That is how he wanted us to live our lives. Never give it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, please pull out your preliminary instructions and turn to page 11. <clears throat> Go to paragraph four. The victim's relatives may make a statement relating to the personal characteristics of the victim and the impact of his murder on his family. They are not allowed to offer any opinion or recommendation regarding an appropriate sentence. Victim impact evidence is not an aggravating circumstance and you cannot consider it as such. Victim impact evidence may be considered to rebut the mitigation presented. You are to consider this information only for this limited purpose. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a recess, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, please remember the admonition. All right. The record will show the jury has left the courtroom. Counsel, please approach.